Bill. Natalie Woods here. We gotta get some pictures. Really? Yes, Bill. Uh, I don't know how long I can hold her, Bill. Bill McKay. Oh, how are you? How are you? And Nancy McKay. Nice to meet you. It's my wife, Nancy. Hello. Doing the campaign, the dinners that you've uh, oh. hosted. It's a pleasure. I admire what you stand for. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Barrett, have you met? Do you like Del like Food? <laughs> Yes, I do. Do you? Do you? Oh, yeah, I like strawberry. Listen, Gimli. Miss Wood, I'm uh, the standard. Do you like yogurt? I'm Arthur Fleischer. Do you? Uh, we met at the uh, seminar no, at Barbara. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, on leave of absence to uh, work on foreign policy. I'm very happy. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm well, it's very interesting, you know. It's a very deep You know what you could do? Buy the plane with it. Add, get fresh for the plane with it. Add, get fresh for the plane with it. Just throw it in. Oh, nuts. Mr. McKay was taking him. Oh, Cedric, could you move it? Just put it in the car. And if you don't have much time to do that, I guess. Right, right. Anyway, nice to meet you. But the fire now beautiful tall With just one luck I was a bad mess Cause that long cool woman had it all
Oh, come on. Are you a doctor? You said a doctor. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Come on, get your clothes on. Get your clothes on. We're gonna get out of here. Come on. Come on, get your clothes. Come on, get your clothes on. Come on. Come on, get your clothes on. Get your clothes <laughs> on. Come on, I want you to get out of here. Get your clothes on. No. Get your... Oh, God. You get your clothes on. No. 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 I'll kill him before I let you touch him. I'll kill him.
please take me home? You're steamed, aren't you? I don't get it. it it's getting late, Andy, please. Who are you with? Where'd you go? To the theater. Theater? Well, who are you today, Lady Macbeth or uh, Scarlet O'Hara? What time did you get home? Mother, it wasn't that late. If it were anybody else except a lovely boy like Sandy Lamb, believe me, your father would hear about this. You think Sandy's just great, don't you? From a mother's viewpoint, he's a catch. It isn't every boy whose father owns a big department store. I know, but... Do you like him? <laughs> He's a little young for me. Did something happen between you last night? Oh, Mother, one doesn't discuss those things with people. I'm not people, I'm your mother. What's come over you lately? You act so, so... Oh, I don't know. I'm 18. I'm growing up. So you feel you should do things that grown-ups do, hmm? Well, is that wrong? It depends upon how you want to grow up. What did happen last night? He wanted to make love to me. He didn't. What do I do about it? About what, darling? Oh, about the way I feel sometimes. Take those feelings. Put them in the bank. Save them for the man who will appreciate them and love you for them after you marry him. But what if I never meet him? I met your father. Maybe I'll never be in love. Maybe I'm just not the type of person that falls in love. <laughs> Listen to the old lady of 18. Were you in love with Papa when you married him? When I met your father, I... I was in love with Rudolph Valentino. Now hurry up and get dressed before your brother is 14. Yeah. Haven't you forgotten something? What? What's the matter with you? You're getting too old for that kind of stuff, kiddo. I thought you'd stop doing that long ago. I didn't want to stop. Did you want to stop what? Uh, nothing, nothing. I was talking to Dad. I didn't kiss her, so it's a big thing. Oh. Bertha, you may serve the souffle. Yes, ma'am. It's fish souffle. You don't have to stand there, darling. Sit down and have your tomato juice. I guess I just don't understand anything. I'm tired. I'd like to change the subject. Why? I'd just like to, that's all. Girls your age don't do things like that. You need an explanation? Hi, rascal. Hi. Girls don't love their father. Since when? Since I got to be 16? Stop that! Sit down. May I please be excused? Hey, hey, Glamour Puss. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll break the date. We'll stay home. This isn't my home. I don't know what to do. All of a sudden, she's, she's a problem. She'll outgrow it, dear. It's it's just the age. The Tommy King. It's just the age when nothing fits. I took you out of that skit is because it just wasn't funny. You're much too young and wholesome. It, it just wasn't right with you doing it. What, what am I supposed to be doing here, then? Look, when you gave me this job, you told me that I was going to be able to learn the theater. All I've done since I've been here is, is sweep floors and, and paint scenery. I've been here a month, and you don't even know I'm alive. Oh, no, Marjorie, that's where you're wrong. I've noticed you from the first minute you came. You don't belong here, Marjorie. 
Why don't you go home? Go home? Why? Because if you stay, you can get into a whole lot of trouble. What kind of trouble? That kind of trouble. Would you care to have lunch with me? I'd love to. I want to prove to you that, that I am an actress. Or maybe I just want to prove it to myself. The part is yours. Just like that? Just like that. Report for rehearsal Monday morning. I'll notify the producer. Yeah. Ah. Whoa! I'm offering you a lift. Or would you prefer an engraved invitation? I might consider an apology. An apology? For what? It's 20 miles back to Baracho. You'd never make it. Well, that's your fault. My fault? I warned you, I would not be left behind in Baracho. You left me no choice, so I had to stow away in Fate's car. And he cast you adrift. And if you had provided me with transportation as far as Gromit, where I could have caught a train, it never would have happened. Gromit was a hundred miles out of our way. And where are you going now? Well, because Professor Fate destroyed all the gasoline, Gromit is a matter of necessity. And when you reach Gromit, you'll send for gasoline? Certainly. But if you were to send for gasoline now, it would be in Gromit when you arrived. If I were to send for gasoline now, I would need a telegraph. Not necessarily. I will take you no further than Gromit. When we got to Bleecker Street, we stopped at 44. Her mother and her sister dared to meet us at the door to be way. Yes, I did, my dear Annie. Oh, you New Yorkers, man, you dance the polka to be way. Yes, I did, my dear Annie. Oh, you New Yorkers, can't you dance the polka? When I got inside the house, the drinks were passed around. The liquor was so awful strong, my head went round and round to me way. Yes, I'm the, my dear Annie. Oh, you New Yorkers, can't you dance the polka? Yes, I'm the, my dear Annie. Oh, you New Yorkers, can't you dance the polka? Yes, JJ. JJ. Ah, what a handsome couple. Then we had another drink before we sat to eat. The liquor was so awful strong, I quickly fell asleep. To me way, yes, I did, my dear Annie. Oh, you New Yorkers, can't you dance the poker to me way? Yes, I did, my dear Annie. Give a nice cocktail party for all of your friends. A cocktail party. Stop look and listen, baby. That's my philosophy. It's called rubber necking, baby, but that's all right with me. Some people say I'm wasting time. They don't really know. Why would I see? See what I'm 
feel pretty. Would you mind watching where... Where I'm going? To the tango, to the tango To the really get the feeling of romantic To the tango, to the tango Do the dance of love You can sail on a ship by yourself My name is Robert Wagner Take a nap on a ship by yourself You can get into bed on your As you can see, I play the part of the butler not much of a part, but Natalie thought I could use the experience in cleaning and dusting. Awesome. <laughs> if I find you breaking in here again, I'll be forced to call the police. You read that line cute, honey. <laughs> Thanks, honey. I was watching you on the monitor, and you look but the greatest. Mm. In case you tuned in late, welcome to Bride and Groom. <laughs> now get out and stay out. You broke in here again? What would you like for dinner tonight, honey? <laughs> How about lamb chops? Oh, yeah, with little green panties. And little new potatoes. And little green peas. Mm. And a little package of Tums. <laughs> Dig a ditch, strike it rich, all by yourself. There are lots of things that you can do alone, but it takes... To the tango, all right, better to, to the tango. To the really get the feeling of romantic To the tango, oh, oh, to, to the, the tango, tango To the dance of love You can fight like a champ by yourself You can lick me in the stamp by yourself You can be very brave on the phone Lots of things that you can do alone I say it takes a We got to patch it up, baby Before we fall apart at the seams We got to patch it up, baby We can't let time unravel our dreams Let's go back and touch the past One more night is all I ask Get that feeling That old feeling Hit it here We can patch it up, baby. We can patch it up, baby. We can patch it up, baby. Patch it up. Oh, 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 why would you want to kill yourself? Because of you. If I can't have you, Dr. Brown, life isn't worth living. Uh, oh, no, Mr. Broderick, not me. It's Sylvia that you need. It's you. I've got Sylvia, and life still isn't worth living. Where are you? I'm down at the pier, and I'm going to jump in and drown. No, Mr. Broderick, please. Not until I get... changed over the weekend. Emilio, people find it very hard to tell each other the truth. Will there be anything else? No. Thanks, Emilio. It's beautiful. Thank you. It must have been some incredible weekend. Do you want a wife, a companion, or just a woman? There are certain things we shouldn't discuss. Why? 
Men discuss their relationships with women. Gentlemen don't. But I'm not a gentleman. I'm a woman. Indeed you are. Then say it. What's expected of me? I'm an emancipated woman, and you're an emancipated man. There are certain things that should remain implicit between men and women. Why? Because that's the way it's been for thousands of years, and I see no reason to change. I am a creature of habit. All the more reason. And now you're using your female attractiveness as a weapon. Equality, real equality of the sexes bothers you, doesn't it? I can speak, read, and write Russian, French, and Arabic. Yes, so can I, plus five other languages. I can drive any car there is. So can Hezekiah. I won the Women's International Fencing Competition. On guard. You gonna stick around with her? You don't have me to look at? Huh? Oh, Mr. Joseph, she doesn't know what she's saying. She's drunk. Our little arrangement about the house is exactly what she wants, and you tell yourself she wasn't so drunk. <laughs> you know? yes, just a minute. Ah. Dance with you, JJ. Yeah, you just you wanna dance with me? Would you rather dance with Mama? Who do you want, JJ? Who'd you rather have, Mama or me? Tell her who you'd rather dance with, JJ. You've been feeding her too much booze, but I get her to little. Oh, bad. You want me, JJ? Tell her. No, you just cut that out. That fellow has got you all upset. That fellow Owen was gonna take me away with him. Oh, Mom. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll take care of you, Alva. Oh, shut up. Mama knows you want me, Mr. Johnson, but I don't think she knew about JJ. Did you, Mama? Do you still want me, JJ? Do you? What about that fellow? Oh, he's gone, isn't he, Mama? Yeah, he's <laughs> gone. Yeah. He's just gone. He went away. <laughs> what do you want? I want to go away. I'll take you. What? Do you mean it? I'll take it. But Alva. No, that ain't enough. You gotta marry me, JJ. I'll marry you. JJ, you crazy? You shut up. I'll marry you, Ella. No, I mean right now. I mean tonight. Right now. Sit down. The both of you. The both of you, will you sit down? Do you want to get married? Well, you said I would, didn't I? Well, that's not what I asked you. Well, who wants to get married? You mean, uh, even though you don't want to marry me, you're willing to do it anyway? Well, I'm just, um, just as much to blame as you are. I'm more, it was my fault, the whole thing, and I'm willing to take my medicine. That's really wonderful. <laughs> and I'm the medicine, right? I know this may come as a great big shock to the both of you, but underneath all this hair and skin is a human girl with all the regular things going for me. And believe it or not, I don't want to spend the rest of my life married to a man who's doing me a big favor. What did I say? What are you talking about? All right, I made one mistake, and it was a beaut. But that doesn't mean I have to ruin my whole life and his and the baby's. The man is willing to marry you. What do you want? I don't want to be a warden all my life. A prisoner of Zenda? Look, I appreciate what you're willing to do. I mean that. I really mean it. But as long as you feel like being married is being in jail, then you wouldn't be happy, right? So if you're not happy, then you take it out on me. And then I'm not happy. And if you're not happy, and I'm not happy, then the baby's not happy. 
So who needs a whole house full of unhappy people? Where are you going? I don't know. I've got to get out of here. I'm going to be late for work. Well, look, you want, you want to hear me say I want to get married? All right. I want to get married. advice and remember always in life into each heart some tears must fall though you love and lose you must stand tall cause we all got to cry sometimes I say cry sometimes pull yourself together no use crying for every coffee
represents Modern Screens Award for the most popular new star of 1956. This award goes to Warner Brothers Young Jr. Natalie Wood. Divorce me, Charlie. Um, wouldn't that be a lot easier for everybody concerned? It's nonsense, Cassie. Is it? Are you going to tell me you've never thought about it? And don't say the church is stopping you. You do lots of other things the church doesn't approve of. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to shout it out here. Only my pharmacist knows for sure. Some other time. The reason you've never asked me for a divorce, Charlie, it isn't religion. It's nobility. You're so damn noble. Working hard to pay the doctors, always returning your library books on time. And now you're worried. People are going to think you're some sort of a coward if you divorce a crazy wife. You're not crazy. No? What am I, then? What is that place on the second floor? Penny Arcade? Dr. Alexander says that you're... Dr. Alexander says I'm what? He says... He says that you're, um... You're 12 years old. Emotionally. Well, what do you expect? I went directly from my father's house to your house. I never even had a chance to pack away my Nancy Drew books. He says that, uh... He's not sure that you'll ever get better. Dr. Hansen, Dr. Warner, wanted radiology. I thought... I've been discussing this... with Father Dunhill. Cassie, come right in. coming around to the rectory, he, he's very worried about you. The children miss you terribly. I know. You're not going to have anything to do with that. Charlie's been to the rectory to talk. He tells me you've been depressed for several years. He noticed. Cassie, it's generally recognized that Catholic women who practice birth control against the teachings of the church are subject to chronic and debilitating depression. Father, I had no choice. My obstetrician said it would be dangerous if I got pregnant again. But if you did have a choice, you could have used rhythm. I used rhythm. The first four years we were married, I had three children. If that's God's will, and if in the course of bringing another soul into the world, you were to... I was to... Uh, that's not necessarily God's will for you. You understand. But if you used rhythm properly and you still became pregnant, there's only one alternative. What's that? You must abstain from marital relations until such time as your doctor feels that you're ready for another pregnancy. Did you tell Charlie that? Yes, and he said that while it would be a hardship, he would be willing to make the sacrifice if it resulted in your getting well. He's had problems with the birth control thing from the beginning. He's a very good man, Charlie. You bet. Everyone says so. So all you...
you need to do is return home and take up your duties as a responsible Catholic wife and mother, and all your problems will fall away like... Cassie, should you be up there? When I was growing up, my mother always felt free to come into my room whenever she wanted. No knock, just bang, the door would open and she'd fly through like a police raid. And I got to thinking how nice it would be when I was grown up and free and the lady of the house. Most little girls dream about marriage and a home of their own. That's very natural. But you see, my idea was that I would finally have a place where I could masturbate in private without my mother bursting through the door. That is not natural. That is downright perverse. What's the matter with you? Maybe I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. But you are as in danger of losing your immortal soul. And if you think God hasn't heard this conversation, Cassie, you're very wrong. Father Dunhill, do you remember a lady who called you in the middle of the night and said she was going to kill herself? You said pray and call back in the morning. You think she did it, Father? You think she killed herself? Maybe she took a birth control pill and washed it down with a quart of scotch and died of a broken commandment. What do you think, Father? You think she's dead? What do you think? It's nothing to me. It's nothing to me. Oh, Molly. I'm afraid once you look through me, it'll be all finished. Molly, Joel, you just, you just feel lousy. You could have any woman you want. Uh, what, what, what's that got to do with anything? I'm sick of other women finding you so attractive. Oh, I, I, I can't help it. What, what can I do? See? You love it. Oh, come on. That's your fantasy. That's in your head. You want to believe it because if other women find me attractive and you got me, wow. Is that what you believe? Yeah. That's what you really believe? Yeah. Well, you're right! <laughs> hey, baby. Oh, Jeff. Oh, Molly, what is it? I don't know. Everything. The kids were fighting. The couple won't go away. They're my age. Teenage skin. And my period's coming. And then... I walk over to that lovely Bill's market, you know, in the corner. And Bill tells me... They're pulling down that wonderful little market. It has such character. Warmth. They're pulling it down to build a gas station. <laughs> Great. And then, as I come home, I see Donald and Reggie on the street. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but I find out that Donald and Reggie have broken up. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy. But it did. Them. Bill's market. Everybody. I mean, everything's disposable. Not, nothing's permanent anymore. Nothing except this goddamn pimple. Oh, I know. We have neighbors. They're gone. We have friends. They've split up. And there used to be a lot to believe in when we were kids. But now, it's just you and me alone. I made that for you. It's a gift. What is it?
don't earn enough money. If you don't do this job right, we not be able to eat. We can't pay rent. They kick us even out of house. Understand? Look, darling. I brought you something. I found it this morning in backyard. See? Butterfly. Pretty little. Let's go. You give it to him. Settle down. Okay, roll it. Rolling quietly. And baby. What? I said, are you nervous? No, mother. Wichita's one and only burlesque theater presents Mama? Gypsy Rose Lee. Her name's Louise. It ain't anymore. Go on, kid. Queen who speaks lousy French and reads book reviews like they was books. Turn it off, Mother. You know what you are to them? A circus freak. This year's novelty act. And when the bill is changed, you'll... I said it. turn it off! Nobody laughs at me because I laugh first at me. Me from Seattle. Me with no education. Me with no talent, as you've kept reminding me my whole life. Well, Mama, look at me now. I'm a star. Look, look how I live. Look at my friends. Look where I'm going. I'm not staying in burlesque. I'm moving. Maybe up, maybe down. But wherever it is, I'm enjoying it. I'm having the time of my life. Because for the first time, it is my life. And I love it. I love every second of it. And I'll be damned if you're going to take it away from me. I am Gypsy Rose Lee. And I love her. And if you don't, you can just clear out now!
tell you that I want you? I do. Will you leave him? Will you come back to me? Or do you just want me to disappear? I won't do that. If I can't have you, then I want to hurt you. And I will. I hate... What? I hate people who have to drink. I'm not even 20 years old. Look a lot older. Thanks. I told Tony everything. I told him about Peter. I guess now he hates me. I guess he always will. I guess I'll never see him again. You want to know a funny thing? You want to know a very funny thing? I love him. I love him. I told him the truth. I stuck a knife into him. And now, I love him. Who are you? I don't even know who you are, Chad. Fix me. Why are you laughing? It's less painful that way. Can't we at least forgive each other? What's forgiven me? We were two kids and we loved each other. We're not kids anymore. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what, Maggie? The way you were looking at me just now, before I caught your eye in the mirror and you started to whistle. I don't know how to describe it. It froze my blood. I've caught you so often looking at me like that. What are you thinking of when you look at me like that? I wasn't conscious of looking at you, Maggie. Well, I was conscious of it. What were you thinking? I don't remember thinking anything. Rick. I told a lie to Big Daddy. But we can make that lie come true. And when that's done, I'll bring you liquor back here. We'll get drunk together here in this place that death has come into. What do you say? What do you say, baby? I admire you, Maggie. You weak people. You weak. Beautiful people who give up with such grace. What you need is someone to take hold of you. Gently, gently, with love, and hand your life back to you. Like something gold you let go of. I do love you, Brit. I do. Wouldn't it be funny if that was true? I'll be back. Next time, I don't miss. Come on, Mort.
let's go home, Debbie. drops his eyes down my body when I'm talking to him. <laughs> Our young lady, who are you? I am a female, past the age of consent. I was the first woman to edit the newspaper at my college. And I shall insist on the right to have as many love affairs as I please. I'm certainly not going to sacrifice one iota of my freedom or dignity for any man. Hello. respected you. My heart to greater loyalty. My hands to larger service. My hands to larger service. My health to better living for my club, my community, and my country. My health to better living for my club, my community, and my country. Who's there? There's nobody. Nobody. Who's somebody here? Somebody was here. Somebody was here. Crazy about you. They call me coquette and mademoiselle And I must admit I like it quite well It's something to be the darling of all La grande femme fatale The belle of the ball There's nothing as gay as life in Paris There's no other person I'd rather be I like what I do 
I like what I see But where is the schoolgirl that used to be me? You'll see me at Cap Don Tibor in Spain I follow the sun by boat or by plane It's any old millionaire in a storm For I've got my mink To keep my heart warm And sometimes I drink too much with a crowd and sometimes I laugh a little too loud My head may be aching But it's unbowed And sometimes I see it all through a cloud Just a dream ago When the world Was young 